All right, what's up, guys? I have a hard time looking at the camera, so I have my uh, student here that I'll be talking to behind the camera. It'll make me make it easier to talk to you guys. There we go. Okay, so today we're covering the National Airspace System. Uh, the objective is to develop knowledge of the National Airspace System. The key elements that we want to cover are the entry requirements to each type of airspace, the communications required, and the visibility requirements. And here are the elements. Uh, we're going to cover the classes, rules, certifications, and equipment requ requirements, uh, VFR, special use airspace, other types of airspace, and ADSB and how it applies. Now, I like using charts for this, so we're just going to use SkyVector. Uh, as though we were actually using a paper chart. Uh, paper charts are a great way to uh, to understand the system. So I'm going to come over here. So let's start with the top. Class A airspace starts at 18,000 feet. And I always remember it as A for altitude. 18,000 feet to flight level 600. And you must be on an IFR flight plan to be uh, in, that, uh, in that airspace. Now let's come down here. Class B airspace is a step down from Class A. Uh, it covers the <laughs> busiest airports. For example, SeaTac here is a class Bravo air, uh, airfield. Class B is depicted by these solid blue lines and it goes from the surface and you can see the little uh, fraction there from the surface up to 10,000 feet. And every class Bravo airspace is um, tailored to the air, airport that it's around. In this case, it looks like this kind of weird upside down wedding cake. Here at the surface, it goes it goes from the surface to 10,000, and this outer shelf here goes uh, Bravo from 2,000 to 10,000 feet. And you see that the class Bravo starts at 3,000 uh, feet here up to 10,000. And you see that it kind of tapers out uh, the further away you go from the main airfield. Now, some of the equipment requirements you have for class Bravo airs. First of all, you must be approved to enter the class Bravo, so you're going to need two-way radio communications. You must hear the phrase. <clears throat> you must hear the phrase. <laughs> You, uh, Cessna 2438 Echo, you are clear to enter the Bravo. Additionally, uh, the Mode C Veil surrounds the Class Bravo airfield, and so you must have a, uh, a mode, speed, mode C Transponder plus ADS-B out to enter this airspace, anything around this Mode C Veil here. So Class A, 18,000 feet, must be on an IFR flight plan. It goes up to flight level 600. Class B surrounds... Class B surrounds the uh, most busiest air, airfields, and it starts at the surface, goes up to 10,000, and it's an upside down wedding cake, and it's tailored to the airfield. Now, Class C is a step down from Class B in terms of how busy it is, and it starts again from the surface, and it goes up to flight uh, to uh, 4,000 feet, and it is, again, like an upside down wedding cake. Class Charlie is depicted by these magenta circles, and you need a, a transponder to enter it, and you need an, a transponder above the Class Charlie air, uh, airspace. You must hear uh, your call sign. So not necessarily like in the Class Bravo, where you have to hear your enter, the, you're clear to enter. All you have to hear is your call sign. Uh, it goes from the surface to 4,000, and then on the outer shelf here, you just look at the little fraction here, 1,300 to 4,000. All right, so Class A, 18,000 to flight level 600, IFR. Class B, you must hear you are clear to enter the Bravo. It's solid blue lines. Class C, magenta lines. And it goes from the surface to 4,000. And you must hear your call sign to enter. Class D is a step down from Charlie in terms of how busy it is. And it's depicted by these dashed circles, these dashed blue circles. This is not to be confused with this ring that corresponds to the VOR. That's a whole other thing, and we're going to cover that. But I've seen students get confused by that. So it's not the VOR ring. It's the dashed blue circle here. Now, Class D usually goes up to 2,500 feet above the surface. And in this case, since the airfield is at 607, the Class Delta goes up to 3,100 feet MSL. And you can tell by that little box, that blue box there. So that's Class Delta. And just like the Charlie, you have to hear your call sign to enter. So when you call them 10 miles out, you'll say something like Payne Tower, Cessna 38 Echo, 10 miles to the west. They will say something like Cessna 38 Echo, enter on the right downwind. If you hear your call sign, you are good to go. You're allowed to enter that class delta. So let's review. Class A, 18,000 and above up to flight level 600, IFR only. Class B, blue Boeing busy airfields. And it's depicted by these blue lines and it goes from the surface to 10,000, upside down wedding cake. Class C, magenta circles and it goes from the surface to 4,000. You must hear your call sign. Class D, dashed blue and you must hear a call sign as well. Now, we're getting into the more complicated one. Class Echo airspace. Class Echo typically starts at 1,200 feet above the surface. If you're on the outside of this magenta vignette, 
its class echo from 1,200 feet above the surface up to the overlying air, uh, airspace. On the soft side of this vignette, it is echo at 700 feet above the surface, and it goes up again to whatever the next category of airspace it is. In this case, 1,200 up to 18,000, then it becomes alpha. In this case, it's uh, 700 echo up to 18,000, and then it becomes alpha. This dashed magenta is echo at the surface. And you can see here, there are some airfields that have dashed magenta uh, lines or circles that indicate that it's echo, controlled airspace, all the way down to the surface. Uh, and it goes up to whatever the overlying airspace is. So on the east side of this blue line, it's echo at the surface, up to 6,000, which becomes Bravo because of the lines, the blue lines. And then above 10,000, it reverts to echo, and then it becomes 18,000 above that. And we'll talk about weather minimums here in a second. All right, so that's echo. And then if you if there's the uh, other echo as 14,500, basically if there's anything else um, that you know doesn't fit into this pattern, then it's 14,500 everywhere else, it's echo. Uh, so that's echo. And then Gulf is the only uncontrolled airspace that starts at the surface and it goes up to the next overlying category. Uh, over here, it's Gulf at the surface. And because we're on the soft side of the vignette, it's golf until 700 feet above the surface. Then it becomes echo. On the hard side, it's golf up to 1,200 feet above, and then it becomes echo. So that's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo, and golf airspace. Cool. Now let's talk about the weather minimums. And there are a couple of different ways that we we remember this. Uh, I've been kind of playing with this one. I kind of like it, and you guys can follow along as I dropped. I hope that's not too obnoxious, the chewing a little bit of a crazy pup. <laughs> All right, so we use the pyramid here. And oh, that's going to be too thick. All right, and bam, and black. Cool, so here, 18,000 feet. At 18,000 feet and above, what kind of airspace is it? Alpha. And so we need to be on IFR flight plan. So there are no VFR weather minimums above 18,000 feet. There, You just can't, you have to be on an IFR flight plan. Now let's draw this at 10,000 feet. In echo or golf, it's 5111 or 5111. Five miles of visibility, 1,000 feet. You must remain 1,000 feet below the clouds and 1,000 feet above the clouds. Let me, let me um, take a step back. We're talking about visibility and cloud clearance requirements in different types of airspace. In class A, you can't be on a VFR flight plan. It must be IFR. So this doesn't apply. Above 10,000 feet, you're either in echo or golf. Uh, you need five miles of visibility, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above, or one mile of separation, horizontal separation from clouds. Class golf at night in Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo. You need three miles visibility. So three, and this one's one, and then two, five, one, and two. Okay, so at night in the golf airspace, or Charlie Delta or Echo, you need three, one, 52. Three miles visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, or 2,000 uh, feet uh, horizontal separation from clouds. Class Bravo, you just need three miles clear of clouds. And then class Gulf, Above 1,200, it's 1,152. So one, one mile of visibility, 1,000 above, 500 below, 2,000 feet of horizontal separation. And then below 1,200, believe it or not, this is the crazy one. In class golf, it is one mile clear of clouds. That is ridiculous to me that you can fly with such low visibility. I wouldn't personally do it. And remember, when we when we say uh, you know, 3,152, we're saying three miles of visibility. So you can see three miles out. You must remain, if this is your airplane, 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet of horizontal separation from clouds, if this is your aircraft. That's, that's what I mean by that. I hope that's, I hope that's clear. If it's not, just drop a comment and uh, we'll, uh, we'll address it. Now let's clear all markings. Now let's talk about special use airspace. And I like to use the acronym MICPRON. And that sounds like a sandwich down in Louisiana. Um, 
<laughs> um, MICPRON stands for MOAS Controlled Firing Areas, Prohibited Areas, Prohibited, uh, Restricted Alert, Warning, and Areas of National Security. Uh, national Security. Okay, and we're going to take a look at what they all look like here in just a second. But remember McPron. Think of McDonald's sandwich down in Louisiana. Bam. Okay, so first of all, MOAs in our McPron acronym. They look like this, magenta with uh, the letters MOA. This is Chinook A, Chinook Alpha MOA. Uh, MOAs are military operation areas where dudes uh, will be flying their cool jets uh, and you know we plebes will have to stay out of their way. We can actually fly through MOAs. Uh, the idea is to separate IFR traffic between them. Excuse me. So oh, why can't I see it? There we go. Now, if you are ever unsure about whether or not you can fly through any airspace, you can go to the legend and confirm. So we're going here. Chinook Alpha MOA goes from 300 feet to 5,000 feet. It is in use intermittent two hours in, in advance by a NOTAM. And the controlling agency is Whidbey Island Naval Air Station. So if you are unsure about whether or not you can fly through that MOA, uh, then contact Whidbey Island, check the NOTAMs, and if it's active, avoid it. Uh, if it's not, you're good to go. You can fly through the MOA. Next is C, controlled firing areas. They're actually not depicted um, on most charts. I think there's like one down in Florida. But basically, a controlled firing is an area is where uh, they'll have active gunnery um, and they are supposed to stop when we fly through, but, you know, keep that in mind. Um, if you see a controlled firing area on your chart, maybe stay, stay clear of it. P stands for prohibited in our MICPRON. Prohibited means we are prohibited to fly in there. So this P51 here, don't fly through it. Now, how high does that go up? Where does it start? Where does it end? I don't know. So let's take, uh, take a look at the legend. P51 in our legend here, P-51 goes up to, but not including, 2,500 feet. It's continuous, so we can never fly through that airspace. And there is no controlling agency. They just expect you to realize, they expect you to know that you can't fly through that P-51 prohibited area. So don't do it. Uh, our restricted, restricted areas are areas that, for whatever reason, are unsafe for us to fly through. Uh, it looks like this, blue with the little hash lines. Romeo 6701. Let's go take a look at the legend and see what it says. So Romeo 6701, where are you? And of course, this will be on your paper chart. So get used to looking at paper charts. Romeo 6701 goes up to 5,000 feet and it's inter intermittent by NOTAM two hours in advance. And Whidbey Island Naval Air Station is the controlling agency on 118.2. So call them up and say, hey, Whidbey Island uh, or Whidbey Approach is restricted area 6701 active and they'll let you know if it's not and then let's go to alert areas alert it's a kind of a step down it's just hey there's some weird activity going on here pay attention in this case it looks like parachute activity so be aware um and again go check the legend and see what it says uh let's go look at it 680 alpha 680 goes up to 3000 and here are the times that it's active, and there is no controlling agency. They just expect you to be responsible and respect the area. So that is the alert area. And then W is warning area. These start uh, three miles off the coast. And uh, again, they are warning you that there is some unusual activity that could be hazardous to you. And again, let's, show, let's go check the, uh, the legend. Warning area, Whiskey 237 Alpha. Whiskey 237 Alpha is... Here, Whiskey 237 Alpha goes up to, but not including, flight level 500, intermittent by NOTAM, and Seattle Center on 125.1 is the controlling agency. So give them a call and see what the story is. That is W and then N, N, areas of national security. And these look like this. That's uh, for reasons of national security. Pilots are requested to avoid, uh, to avoid flight at and below 2,900 feet MSL in this area. So don't fly there uh, below that altitude. And again, national security could be anything from the president to military secrets or whatever, um, basically anything that they don't want you flying over for whatever reason. Again, if you're not sure of what something looks like or what it means, check the legend. It's here on the uh, on the edge of the, uh, the chart. Uh, for example, what the heck is this? That's a national security area. Bam. And you can see FAR 91.215 and the aim. Okay, bam, national security area. Cool. Now let's talk about other 
um, other airspace you might see. Military training routes will look like this, uh, and it's a route that the military is going to be taking frequently. Frequently, so you know, be cautious when you're flying around there. Um, let's see, TFRs, temporary flight, temporary flight restrictions. Uh, Any time, like for example, a football game. If the Seahawks are crushing their opponents uh, in Seattle, then there's going to be a temporary flight restriction over and around the uh, the stadium. So don't fly through them. Uh, they should be acted by, or they should be announced on NOTAMs. Uh, so check your NOTAMs. That's one of the requirements before we fly, anyways. So check your NOTAMs. Uh, parachute areas. We saw one of those. There's something like that, and there's also a different symbol you might see for other activity. You'll see this little glider symbol with a different letter, like aerobatic glider, hang glider, ultralight, unmanned air vehicles, parachutes, space launch activity area. That's probably the coolest one I've ever seen. Uh, so that is that. And then TERSA's terminal radar service areas. Uh, these are kind of going away, but they're kind of like class Charlie, class Delta airspace. They're going to have a gray border and you can get additional radar services in that airspace. Uh, and then national security areas check. Uh, and I think that about covers it. VFR, oh, you, um, VFR routes. You might see Victor Airways like these. Um, those are kind of like the highway in the sky. They're more used by IFR traffic, um, but, uh, you know, you want to be careful. All right, let's talk about ADSB. ADSB stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, and it's a way to supplement our radar, um, our radar services. Instead of ATC pinging our aircraft and uh, interrogating our, our transponder, uh, our transponder will send out a packet of information, something like, hey, this is our call sign, this is our altitude, this is what we're doing. Uh, and so it helps ATC uh, have a clearer picture of what's going on in their airspace. And it is mandatory in class A, B, C airspace, in class Charlie airspace, and above it up to 10,000 feet, class Echo airspace above 10,000 feet, uh, three miles off the um, in the Gulf of Mexico, or sorry, 3,000 feet above the Gulf of Mexico, and 12 nautical miles off the coast. Um, so again, ADSB automatic dependent surveillance broadcast out. It's our transponder or our aircraft sending out information to ATC. And then ADSB in is that really cool service where you can uh, have other aircraft on your iPad, almost like radar on your own iPad, and you can see other airplanes flying around. ADSB is voluntary. It, or, uh, ADSB in is voluntary. ADSB out is mandatory in ABCE airspace. And uh, Class Delta does not require it unless you're inside this Mode C veil. So my buddies over at Payne Field might be wondering, hey, why do I have to have a transponder or, or, a, or, or a ADSB out? It's because we're in the Mode C veil. So just be aware of that. Bam, that covers that. Cool. So we covered Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Golf airspace. Remember, Alpha, 18,000 feet and above, IFR flight plan. Bravo, busy, Boeing, uh, surface to 10,000, upside and wedding cake. You need a clearance to enter. Class Charlie, step down from uh, Bravo, still towered. Up to 4,000 feet, you need to hear your call sign. Class Delta, step down in, in terms of busyness from Charlie. Need to hear your call sign. Dashed blue circles. Uh, goes up to 2,500 feet above the surface. Class Echo is the weird one. There's a bunch of different rules. But in general, 1,200 on the outside, 700 on the inside, up to the next category. Dashed uh, magenta, class Echo at the surface. And class golf is the only uncontrolled airspace. Goes from the surface up to the next category of airspace. We covered McPron, the special use airspace. MOAs, controlled firing areas, prohibited, restricted, alert, warning, and uh, areas of national security. And we covered some additional uh, weird airspace and ADSB, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast. Uh, at this point, I would quiz you, but <laughs> we're not actually face to face, so uh, you'll have to do your own quiz. Check out the free Cessna quiz site. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See ya.